Hey guys, soap opera time, Blue Lagoon, it's not stopping, but I know you guys, you're interested in this, so it keeps coming. The eruption is still ongoing and doesn't seem to slow down, so we'll talk about that as well. But I'll let you know the news first. We know, I have reported about two days ago, that the Blue Lagoon has made a statement trying to justify their actions about the evacuation because there was another emergency evacuation and the Icelandic press, especially MBL, has reported about that emergency evacuation and um, they have shown a video that is in the description of this video as well, by the way. It's just a few second uh, cell phone clip of a woman super, super scared, in panic, running out of the Blue Lagoon and uh, a lot... A lot of reports of people that were there or wanted to go there and what was their experience with the evacuation or how this has been handled are in my previous videos about the Blue Lagoon if you're interested in that, guys. But the Blue Lagoon has basically stated, well, that they're in close contact with the civil defense and the police in Sudorns and that they're basically listening or relying on the information of the police chief of Sudorns if he tells them that they can be open, that they are open. So to me, in my opinion, but that's just my personal opinion, this did sound a little bit that they were kind of doing well. If shit, shitty hits the fizzy, so to speak, um, that it's not their fault because they were told that they could be open. So that's basically pushing it a little bit. Oops, was that guy, right? Was it us? I get that feeling, whether that is the case or not, I don't know. It's just my feeling that I get from what I heard. So there was a statement of the police chief of Sudurns today. And also, again, my personal opinion and my gut feeling. So I have a feeling that now he, since there was an incident yesterday, there was a worker in the Blue Lagoon area outside with a backhoe. And then he had breathing problems and there was a toxic volcanic gas reaching the area and he was breathing that in so he had to be hospitalized although the blue lagoon stated they have measuring instruments gas meters everywhere but uh, obviously that worker did not have one and there wasn't one in his area so he didn't know that the toxic air was coming towards him so an incident that should not have happened in my opinion right and it seems the police chief is of that opinion too and I my gut feeling is that he's releasing the statement today because they want to cover their backs as well because Blue Lagoon can say, well, you, did you allow that, right? We know the people in Grindavik are allowed to come back in. No tourists, only residents, businesses, and emergency personnel. But, you know, the winds have been blowing and... and um, the gases, the volcanic gases have even spread to the UK and Sweden and even reaching Poland, but not in a concentration where it would be toxic there because the pollution is too high up. So it doesn't affect the lower air that people are actually breathing. So not yet, but that is all new compared to the last eruptions because this eruption is lasting way longer than the previous eruptions in this system since November. And uh, that's why the police chief today has made this statement, and it is in the news in Iceland as well, because the wind direction is changing, and he says it can hardly be considered defensible to maintain activities in the Blue Lagoon while an eruption is still going on. And this also applies to other activities on the risk assessment map of the Icelandic Metrological Office, so within these areas that have still these hazard levels and elevated hazard levels. So in his opinion, there is a threat from lava flow and gas pollution in Grindavik and in Svartsengi under the current conditions because the risk of that air pollution may threaten the health of the people in these marked danger zones on the hazard map in the coming days. So the police and the labor inspectorate are investigating this incident where the employee had to be hospitalized. Thankfully, he was released later on and he's recovering at home, but the gas contamination has definitely happened. So 
the police repeatedly states in their announcement that it is that they recommend against people staying in Grindavik and within the whole air map of danger zones because there can be life threatening situations. So they are saying this. So whoever will now be in these areas, in my opinion, is doing so at their own risk. And they can't blame the police chief or the police of Sudurns that it's their fault that they have allowed them to be in there. So they will closely monitor the pollution and they will revise that on Monday should something change. And they're also monitoring the lava flow that is threatening to flow in Sudostranda Vik, um, but right now the lava flow is not threatening the road yet. What is happening, the lava is not moving forward anymore, it's moving upwards. It's new lava is flowing on top of old lava, so it's as high as 16 meters in the direct proximity ar around the craters where the lava is still coming out. And um, that's why they're considering to make the defense walls around Grindavik higher, because they're approximately eight meters high and the lava, since it's building up itself, it could flow over these walls and then it'll flow into Grindavik. So that's why I want to let you know really what the police of Sudurns has posted. They have made a statement on Facebook and they have made a post, a press release to the media. And uh, I want to let you know about this because I think this is really important for everything. We've been talking so much about the area, about the Blue Lagoon. I mean, I'm just happy that the Blue Lagoon hasn't reopened yet. So it's saying, good morning, press release to the media. An eruption has started between Hagafell and Stora Skokfell on Saturday, the evening of March 16th after a short earthquake activity. Um, although the earthquake activity and the lava flow have decreased since the beginning of this eruption, the lava activity or the volcanic activity, the eruption activity seems to be quite stable still. The eruption has now been the 7th since March 19th, 2021, the seventh eruption. We know there have been the Fagradalsfjall eruptions as well. And uh, this eruption in this area is the fourth eruption in a row in just a few months in the Sutnuka Crater series. There was no warning this time for this eruption, but they managed to evacuate both Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon, where a number of guests was present. The police chief estimates that there is a threat of lava flowing, spilling over the defense walls into Grindavik and also of gas pollution into Grindavik and into Swartsengi under the current conditions. And there he means where the wind is blowing the toxic gases that are coming out from the eruption site and from the lava carpet that's there from the drying but still very hot lava. So um, he's also saying that the lava tongue that is approaching the road that is east of Grindavik, Sudo Vigo is closely monitored and it does not threaten the road so far. I just mentioned it's building up and not moving forward. Um, there are also closely monitoring the co the contamination in the marked danger zones. The risk that is thought in these areas is air pollution that can threaten people's health in these zones within the next few days. Um, then also they say the police have to investigate an incident at the Blue Lagoon where an employee there had to seek help in a hospital due to gas pollution. The labor inspectorate still has that incident under investigation. With varying wind directions, it can not be considered safe to keep outdoor activities in the Blue Lagoon while volcanic eruption is still ongoing. And this also applies to other activities 
within that risk assessment map of the Icelandic Metrological Agency. Tourists are not in the Blue Lagoon right now, but it seems they're working. Workers are there in the Blue Lagoon. And what they're basically saying is that nobody should be there. So, but we know that there's people in the Swartzengi power plant. So he hasn't really mentioned this power plant, but he says within the marked hazard zones, but probably... I don't think the power plant can run without anybody there present, but they're probably inside with an air filter or gas mask or whatever, because he's saying outside, right? So they're further saying the police chief begs the residents of Grindavik and others who have an interest in being in these marked danger zones to not stay there. There can be situations that can be life-threatening to people in this marked area. And then they're saying the press release, this press release will be updated later the coming Monday. So to those people that have business to do in Grindavik, they are instructed to regularly check the air quality in the area on the website of the Institute of the Environment. There's a link. And it's, I'll, I'll put the link here, it's loftgeddy.is. But this is difficult. Oh, hi, now Rudy is here. He's assisting me. He was just barking a few minutes ago, so I had to re-record the last two sentences all the time because he was barking and playing with Eddie. So, yeah, but how can you, that's the problem. If you're working outside in a backhoe, um, you know, and, and wind can change quickly, and then do you have to have that website open all the time to check for air? And you know, it takes a, doesn't it take a while until that website is updated? So that sounds risky to me. I think uh, that's not feasible in my opinion, right? I don't know, Woody, what do you think? Yeah, so he looks at me, he says, uh, I think what you say. And now he leaves, he says, I don't want to be involved, do your thing. Um, so yeah, so Grindavik residents should check the air quality on the website. Um, and then the, the police is saying it is important to keep the following in mind. Residents and employees enter the town at their own risk. Everyone must be responsible for their own activities or inactivity. The chief of police clearly states that Grindavik is not a place for children or children to play. There are no functioning schools and infrastructure is not working properly. The police chief does not recommend that residents stay in the town at all. Earth cracks, cracks are in the earth in and around town and the cracks and sinkholes can open without notice. There is a danger in the cracks and cracks movement. We know that that level is called crack collapse. It's an own hazard level that they have invented um, for Grindavik. Gas pollution and lava flow are considered a high risk. So counterbalance measures are and have been ongoing that include mapping of the cracks, earth surveys, land surveys and visual inspections. And then the cracks that have been found have been fenced off. But you know, you never know. We've seen it in the past that new cracks have opened cracks that have been filled. So they want to cover their bases here as well, telling the people don't come after us if something happens. And remember, when I did the Blue Lagoon video, I said that. I said, oh, 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 their statement looks like they're blaming them. And I think this is their response to this. I might be wrong with this, but... To me, it's the timing of this, um, and it comes right after something did happen in the Blue Lagoon. They're further saying, open areas in and around Grindavik have not been specifically examined. People should stay off the streets of the town and avoid going out to land and other open areas. Grindavik is closed to everyone except responders, residents of the town, employees of the town's companies, contractors, and those who need to assist residents. Media people are allowed to enter the town the same way as residents 
and corporate employees. There are still hazards in the area and conditions inside and outside the danger zones can change with short notice. Then the also dangers can hide outside the marked areas of this hazard map. They are having closure posts at the intersection of Linda Vico Vego and Reykjanesbraut, Nes Vego and Sudostranda Vego. Escape routes from Grindavik are through the road Nesvik and Sudostranda Vego. We know Sudostranda Vego is threatened by the lava flow. It's still open. Um, Grinda Vico Vego has been uh, compromised by lava flows near Grindavik and Swartzengi. So there is no way out through that road. Um, they're further saying to draw people's attention to the surrounding dangers, three warning sirens have been installed inside of Grindavik. And then there is one by the Blue Lagoon and another by the HS Energy Power Plant in Swartzengi. And they have been used so far with good results. We have seen this in the evacuation video of Walk With Me Tim, a YouTuber that has been in the hotels in the hotel at night when suddenly he heard the sirens, he looked out of the window and the eruption was in full force. So there was no warning time between the earthquakes and the eruption. The siren started when the eruption was already visible. Um, then the police also states that few people from Grindavik choose to stay in town overnight. And the police chief does not recommend staying there overnight at all and cannot guarantee their safety under the current circumstances. So they're, they're covering their bases again. Responders are working in Grindavik and the police and the fire department are conducting legal supervision in the town as it has been before. Um, an ambulance is located in Grindavik every day during the day, so not during the night. Um, then they're referring to a Public Safety Act, verse 23, number 88 slash 2008. Um, there are limited limitations, no other than in these articles. The arrangement stated above will be reviewed on Monday the 25th and or sooner depending on the events. So that is his statement and I think this makes it clear. They want everyone out but Grindavik is open. They have not closed it down officially like they did in the past because they have received backlash from this uh, about this from the residents and the businesses. They had filed lawsuits for their civil rights violated to be in their properties, to use their properties. The press was filing a lawsuit that they are not being let in. So they, they gave in to that. They're letting them in, but they're really, really making it clear that they are on their own and should something happen, Happen. It's their own fault and it's their own risk. And it seems they're doing so the same for the Blue Lagoon. Um, and I think they're right with this because in my opinion, and I've said it very often, the Blue Lagoon keeps taking their chances because it was clear something would happen eventually. They can monitor the magma chamber, the land rise, and they were making calculations saying, hey, it's as full, even fuller than it was before we saw the last eruption. So at that time, you know, I think it's time to close that Blue Lagoon to not put people repeatedly through this scaring emergency evacuation process. There's older people, there's children, there's people that might have, you know, PTSD or whatever. I mean, they're hearing sirens at night. They have to run out. They're, they're scared. They're, they're, they feel the heat in that area of the Blue Lagoon. People have reported they felt the heat. One guy was in the pool when the eruption started and he felt the heat. And uh, Walk With Me Tim reported in the parking lot when he drove out, he felt the heat in his car from that eruption. So that is not good. People should not be traumatized if you want to have a relaxing spa event, right? And it's it's not a necessary life-saving operation that people need to be there. There's other beautiful places in Iceland where you can divert the tourists and then share maybe the revenue with the Blue Lagoon or employ the Blue Lagoon residents at these places in the mean uh, and not residents and um, workers in the meantime. But you know, it's the workers in Grindavik have the same problem, right? that they were out of a job or that the businesses could not make money but it was always the exception for the blue lagoon right 
Um, so yeah, this was my update about this. I have other updates as well. It, that will come in a second video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave this video a like. If you're new here, hi, please subscribe. I would love to have you on my channel. And if you subscribe, click the notification bell so that you can always be on the pause with me with, with that silky blonde here. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Rudy has already left the stage, um, but I'm sure we will see him again very, very soon. And thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon, morning, evening, and I see you soon. I'm out of here. Bye.